Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're back in the OWASP top 10. And uh, this is the number nine out of 10 uh, security risks out there on the list. And this list, or this, uh, this security risk is uh, called using components with known vulnerabilities. Uh, so I guess the easy, the easy thing to say, um, and many people would maybe think, well, hey, just don't use components in your web application that have known vulnerabilities, right? Well, it's easier said than done. Um, typically, when you build out your web application, you're going to pick and choose different things that you need to create that web application. And inevitably, something is going to have a vulnerability that is known. Um, so let me, I'll just draw a couple of things up here. We'll talk through, uh, you know, kind of this situation and how to, how to uh, guard against it. So let's say you have your awesome web application. So here's your web, your web app out here that, uh, that everyone loves and they visit it all the time and you get a million, you know, hits a day or whatever. So whenever you build this thing, it has some fundamental components to it, right? So maybe you have a, uh, maybe you have a web server of course, right? Maybe you have a, uh, it's an R, maybe you have a, uh, I'll put a DB, like a database server. And let's say this web server, let's say you choose to use Apache, that's a pretty, uh, pretty common one. Let's say for um, database, you use Oracle, that's another pretty common one. Let's say that because you're all interested in security, you wanna make sure that the clients that access your web application come in encrypted, so we're going to use uh, TLS SSL capabilities. So that's uh, so your web address is going to be HTTPS, um, you know, webapp.com kind of thing. Alrighty, so the, that's just a very basic list, of course, but you can start to understand that there's a lot of different components that go into your web application. Um, I went out there and uh, looked recently and, uh, and checked out, like say on the Apache web server, are Apache web servers, uh, you know, do they have any known vulnerabilities um, on them? There's a, there's a pretty common one out there uh, that's it's called the struts. I'm just gonna kind of start writing all this across here. So there's a struts vulnerability that's unique to the Apache web server. It's, it's based on the different, ver based on what, you know, version you have. Uh, an Apache web server could be vulnerable to this struts vulnerability. Another one, say for Oracle, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a Java, Java VM, Oracle database server, known vulnerability out there. And by the way, there are many, many, many known vulnerabilities uh, that I could list here, unique to Apache or Oracle, or any number of components that you might use. For TLS SSL, there's a, uh, there's a pretty common one back in April of 2014 called Heartbleed. And if you did not configure your TLS SSL configuration uh, correctly, you may be vulnerable to what's called Heartbleed, and you guys probably remember that one. Um, interestingly, uh, there's a website called uh, Shodan, and it does a scan of all the uh, all these internet websites, web applications, whatever. I did one uh, literally today and checked to see, is anyone still vulnerable? I mean, this thing's been out there for no a number of years now. Is anyone still vul vulnerable to Heartbleed? And uh, and the, the list that I came up with today, there was almost 120,000 um, web applications still vulnerable to Heartbleed today. So, uh, so just because it's an old one out there and it's like, you know, you may think, hey, that one's kind of gone and we're not worried about that one anymore. The truth is that uh, many, you know, uh, web applications may still be vulnerable, these legacy applications or whatever. All right, so, um, so you start to get the idea that as you build your web application, you're going to probably be forced into a situation where you have to use components that have known vulnerabilities. There's kind of some good and bad with that. The good part of the known vulnerabilities is we do know about them, so we know what to, you know, to protect and fix and all that stuff. Uh, the bad part about it is we do know about them. And so if we know about them, then the bad guys know about them and they know to go and exploit those. So, uh, so let's say, for example, you've got a web application using these different things um, and for one reason or another, the attacker bad guy is going to say, hey, I know that you're using an Apache web server. Maybe you're disclosing too much information or that kind of thing. Uh, and they understand that the version that you're using. And then they can go and do, you know, a, a Google search for, hey, how can I exploit this Apache web server on, on that version? And they find out that you're vulnerable to the struts vulnerability. And then they, they can know exactly what to go after. 
Um, so again, the good part is if you use a vulnerable version of this, you'll know what to protect for. Um, if you, uh, but if you use a vulnerable version, then the attacker knows what to attack for kind of thing. So he knows the exact attack space as it were. All right, so that's the situation, known co or components with known vulnerabilities. Uh, a couple of things to consider here is uh, in, in terms of uh, guarding against this is I'm gonna say continuous inventory of your clients and servers. So I'll just say, I'll just put inventory up here. Inventory and I'll put clients and servers. All right, so uh, which, by the way, in, in your business, you know, from a business perspective, you've got a lot of clients out there, too, that may be vulnerable with uh, various components. Uh, so it may not just be web servers that we're talking about here. So from a business perspective, from an, a total ownership perspective, you need to, you need to constantly be um, committed to inventorying your clients and your servers that you own or that you control. And then that way you can know, um, you know, what to, what's out there, what to look for, all of that. So do a continuous inventory, as it were. Um, and then I'm going to say download components from trusted sources or official sources. Uh, so I'll just put, uh, I'll put uh, downloads, I'll just put downloads for now. But basically the idea here is if you are going to download some software, um, you know, you're not necessarily going to walk down the street and buy it at the, at the, you know, at the countertop or whatever with the person standing there. Uh, maybe you are, but likely you're going to download the software, right? So when you download this software, maybe it's Apache or Oracle or whatever it is, then make sure you get it from a proper official channel. Um, you may even want to make sure that it's uh, digitally signed to ensure that it's coming from a reputable source. Uh, if you're downloading a bunch of stuff off of some crazy websites that you don't even know where they're coming from, then, uh, you know, then that opens up the chance that your downloads, your software may be uh, I don't know, maybe full of holes or it may not be exactly what you wanted it to be. Uh, so that could be problematic. So make sure you download from the right places. Um, I'm going to say, I'm just going to put plan over here. Plan for things like uh, monitoring. I'll put monitor. Um, I'm going to put uh, uh, patch. Uh, we're going to say config. Those, kind, those types of things. So have a plan in place to say, hey, I know what my components are that, that make up the entirety of my web application, and I'm going to monitor those, uh, those components. I'm going to patch those components. So as a patch comes out from the, uh, you know, let's say again, Apache, whatever, Apache releases a patch um, to handle this struts problem. So we need to patch that. We need to configure our uh, clients and servers properly and we need to stay on top of that. But all of this goes back to, let me have a plan and make sure that, I've, that, I, uh, you know, that I do things according to the plan that I have in place. All right, so with all of this, like I said, I know that it's, uh, um, it's inevitable that you're gonna put uh, components in your web application that have known vulnerabilities, so it's, it's really hard to get around that. So what we need to do is we need to come down here and just make sure that we're constantly checking these things. A couple of, couple of things that I'll uh, finish up with are a, a, uh, some databases. One is called the CVE, and then another one is the NVD. All right, the CVE stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exploits, um, and then the NVD is the National Vulnerability Database. So uh, I'll put links to these, uh, um, you know, with this video. But you can go and if and you can check. Hey, here's the comp there, these are the components of my web application. Let me uh, let me check against these two databases, as it were, to see if there's any vulnerabilities that are known with the components that I have. So uh, again, number nine on the list uh, of the top 10 OWASP using components with known vulnerabilities. It's an inevitable thing. Uh, so while, they're all, while, while there are vulnerabilities out there, we can still take steps to mitigate those and, uh, and ensure that, uh, that, we, that we stay on top of this as much as possible. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video. Hey, if you like this video, you can click subscribe right here on this DC ball, and uh, we'll see you guys out there in the community.